Dude, I haven't seen Jack's jungles, honestly. He, I want to call it dead because I just never see it. So this is going to be Dude, I think it's sleeper OP, man. At least in low elo where every game is 40 minutes. Yeah. Definitely a Gold Reliant champion. All right, that's good. You leave the base. Now, I don't like where you walk. The reason why I don't like being here is... Wait, are you invading? What are you doing? Okay, so the reason why I don't like this path is assuming you and the enemies leave the base at the same exact time. If they run down mid and you run down here, if they walk into here, they'll see you make it to this bush. Does that make sense? So, mm, okay. Yeah, theoretically, if someone ran all the way down, this is what I do every game. I run all the way down, go into the bush. If you would have done that, they would have seen it and it might set you up for maybe they wait a little later and hit you and then you're running lower health, etc. Maybe die. I don't like where you ran. If the only way this would be considered acceptable is if you guys were doing a cheese, like an invade, but... Your team's not necessarily behind you, so this is unnecessary. So what you should have done was run straight from base down mid lane, and it looks like you would have actually beat this guy because he left the fountain late, which is very common in lower mid elos, even in higher elo. So he left it late, so what happened was you would have ran down here, gone straight into the bush. If the only way they could see you going into this bush is if they ran at the same exact speed straight out mid, that's the only way. And if they would see you, guess what? you see them too, so you know that they see you. So at that point, you can either proceed or you can go back around this way, it doesn't matter. So yeah, pretty much just always go to this bush first and you can keep watch. If you're going in for a ward, if you're just walking up the ward, that's fine. But I wouldn't recommend just waiting there. Okay, so, yeah. that's a really good point. I, I never even considered that because I get people invading me there all the time and I didn't even think that was the reason why. Right, so did you lay your word or something? What was your plan when you were going over there? Wukong. So I like to start there. I I'm actually doing a blue buff invade, so I like to stand over here and make them think I'm doing blue. Um, and then have my bot lane do a late to late go to lane so I can just hop over and steal blue without any contest. That's really it. That's the only reason in there. All right. That's not a bad strategy. I feel like you can solo the enemy jungler because they're a trash champion like Wukong. The smartest thing you can do right now in early game champions, whether you're playing Nidalee, Talia, any red buff, level two jungler is heck i've even been doing on evelyn it's really strong is you want to be able to lay your word no later than 105 and then recall on that recall after you lay your word no later than 105 buy oracle lens and then do your buff and you'll be there on time and the cool thing about the oracle lens is by the time you're able to really gank it should be up and then as you're running to the gank you can activate it so like let's say you're right here well you wouldn't want to activate it yet you'd wait till you're on the other side because you know how it's a circle Mm -hmm. So if this was warded, once you're right here, the circle would still be able to see it. So you'd activate it here, you'd go into this bush, and if there was no wards, you could just come up behind. But let's say if there was a ward, and if you didn't have the oracle lens, they could be fucking with you standing here and then just like waste your time, and you just wouldn't know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I normally do that. I just don't do it on jacks, because the ward jumps make ganking so much easier. Fair enough. That That's something to consider, is that jacks is... Yeah, I, I, that's such a good strat for just ganking generally that that oracle lens man it's op yeah it's busted it used to be do you remember when it was just the plane circle and it didn't follow you it was called something else nah i just started playing again two months ago oh shit i, was, I played back in 2009 and came back for season nine uh, all right no worries yeah I always get that leash if you time your e properly on the first buff you should be able to soak two autos which will also do more damage to it nice did you get the second block? I'm not sure. I don't think I did. Yeah. It, it takes, it's like a really, really, really tight timing on it. Because the, the buff attacks so damn slow. Tiny little things add up to massive differences. So while you're taking the buff, especially after you've used your E, which is the hardest timing, you want to be staring straight at the minimap. So look at the minimap, don't look at the screen. And off of the minimap, oh yeah, let's just look at it while you're doing this. So for example, if you want to gank top or mid next, you're staring at the minimap in this area. And then the moment you see the enemy champion, you want to note where they're coming from. For example, if Ryze were to cut in from this side right here, you'd think, well, he probably just warded this area. I might not want to go mid. Or same thing with top lane. Or if they come just straight flat in, just from the normal way, then you're like, well, there's a good chance it's not warded. So let's see. Oh, okay. Yes. So just that. Okay. So you see Ryze came from deep back. You see where he came from? Yeah. So it's like most likely he didn't ward and yeah, oh, he shit, didn't that's ward. A good point. It's just playing the odds, like poker. So you see Jax, you don't see the enemy top laner. Where is he? And then you, there you see him. You see how he came from deep back here? 
See how yeah. He, yeah, so the odds of him warding are pretty damn slim. Typically, if they did, they would have came from this bush, this bush, or they would have, like, came from right here. So, and let's see. Yeah, they, neither one of them warded, so they're they're so bad for not warding. It's a Jack's jungle, so I assume you're going to get a kill. Yeah, I, uh, that's actually super smart. This this play was actually really risky in retrospect because I didn't know that they didn't have a ward, but right, it's good to know right. I could have known that. So you hug that, that's good. Theoretically, if this was warded, it wouldn't see you. Since you hugged that wall right there, if you would have ran middle or from here, it would have seen you. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Something to also consider while you're watching these lanes, let's pretend it wasn't Vagar. Or I guess let's pretend it it's Vagar, it's fine. He doesn't have Ignite in level one, he has zero CC. So going for the gank on Rise would have been absolutely pointless because you wouldn't get the kill. So you would want to go for the Teemo since he at least has Ignite, even though he doesn't have CC either level 1. But yeah, the blue buff invades fine. You see Wukong mid lane. The moment you see Wukong mid, this is just tiny shit. So you click to go here. The moment you see him, you want to fucking click over here on the minimap. You click on Wukong. You just want to get in the habit of clicking on him. Because if you had like red and blue buff, you want to know what relatively time. Because you know how right here it shows you like how much longer it has left. Okay. So, so that could be useful information. You're like, okay, his red buff's almost over. I'll fight him. Or you'll be like, okay, he did red then blue buff because his red buff is about to expire. So just get used to immediately click on the min map, clicking on him, and then you're gonna want to press tab. Whenever you press tab, this you should be able to do this in just like two seconds. It's just a matter of like actively thinking, okay, there he is. I'm gonna click on him. And once you press tab, you can see how much CS he has. And then you'd see, okay, he has four CS. He's only done red buff. And then while you're taking his blue, what you're gonna want to do is. Just fucking watch him while you're taking it. And you're like, okay, where is he going? He just took his red buff and he's going back over here. So that means he's either retarded and he's going to go farm raptors and golems and waste his pathing options, or he's going to my blue buff. And mm -hmm. so he's not obviously not coming right over here because he would have just walked over here from mid. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was tunnel visioning, excuse me, tunnel visioning on the blue buff. I didn't even know Wukong was mid until <laughs> watching him right now. <laughs> Yeah, the, the mini buff gives you all the answers you need in solo queue. Yeah, I should yep. see, I shouldn't have needed to smite that if I'd known he was mid. Another thing you would have been looking for is, so while Wukong was doing this, you would have also been paying attention to your next gank. So for example, Renekton, you didn't see him at all. Whenever he was up here, he never walked down here to ward. Like you never see him move for the ward. So you can just assume this isn't warded. So it's a good gank. If you were to thought this was mm -hmm. warded, you might've just wanted to just keep farming his jungle. And we don't okay. see Wukong over here. I don't. Where? What is he doing? I'm curious. What is he doing? Oh, pff. so he actually pathed back to his Raptors. The fuck? All right. See, I don't. I don't. That. That to me, you're laughing at it, but I have no idea why that's bad. I probably would have done that. Okay. So <laughs> the reason why this is bad is so he just ganked, and at this point, theoretically, everyone should know where he is. Everyone on both teams. So after he does this gank, since you already know he has red buff. He's going to spend all this time walking back to where he already was to farm these camps. So what that does mm -hmm. is it leaves, not only is it wasted pathing, but it leaves this whole side of his jungle open for an invade. Even if you couldn't 1v1 him, let's pretend you were a fiddle jungle or something shitty. Like, even if you couldn't 1v1 him, you could still take this because you knew he walked back this way. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, that makes sense. And and you so might... It's not that it's inefficient path-wise, it's that it gives me complete control over the top side. Yeah, it's both. If he, if, he, if he wanted it to theoretically be efficient, he would have gone to Golems, then Raptors, then this, then that. But once again, since he already ganked, he gave away his position, and he's going back there. It, it just leaves him so vulnerable. And it also... I don't want to information overload you, because this is a lot coming at once. But another issue with bad junglers doing shit like this is now that you know he's going to be over here, it leaves his top laner so vulnerable. You can go in knowing for a fact no one's going to come to stop you. And so it, let's pretend if Wukong didn't go to gank at all, if he didn't take that chance on a shitty gank, because I think Ryze was level 1 at the time, if he didn't do that, you wouldn't know, and you'd have a little bit less confidence going in for gank. So by him doing that, he's basically screwing over his team. All right, let's see it. Let's see it. Just walk up on him. You don't have your ward, so... Yeah, that was fine starting it there, because he might have, like, flashed into the bush, and you would need to have it up. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, God. Where, where'd your jump go? Like, where is it? I jumped on him to get the stun so he couldn't hit Teemo. Okay. Which, in retrospect, is totally unnecessary. 
it's basically like who flinches first because you don't know when he's gonna flash so basically what happened is you flinched too soon if you wanted to play it safe since you're since he could theoretically flash you could have even jumped at this mini and then stun but your jump was a little bit too early you should have walked at him for a little bit longer made him uncomfortable but overall the gank was good other than that flash and now yeah you stay to shove it he doesn't have teleport so if you would stay and shove this you you get a fuckload of experience like the shared experience out of minions early is insane so if you stay and shove this you would probably get level three honestly okay. and and what would happen is if you if you stayed and you guys are both hitting it non-stop you'd crash this wave before his wave gets there because you see how your wave's back here wherever yeah. your wave is that means that his wave is so if your wave's behind your secondary turret that means his is too so you can use this information to gauge how fast you can push so you guys can obviously push this fast enough crash these minions here and they'll all die before renekton gets backed and and you'll, you and Timo will both get a big advantage but what's going to happen is Renekton should get back in time for this now. So Teemo dies, and Renekton's gonna soak this massive wave. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He didn't miss out. He didn't really miss out on anything. He died, put him slightly behind, but he really didn't miss out on any gold or XP. Not much. Going for your golems after this, I don't think was that necessary. I guess since you didn't soak the wave, but if you would have soaked the wave, you would have been level three and could have just ganked mid with your Vagar stun. Do you know what I mean? But since you weren't level 3, I understand you want to get that level 3. Uh, getting kind of low, and you just saw Wukong was in this area, so a back is probably a good choice. Where is Wukong? He's just fucking around. And whenever he ganked, for example, you would have pressed tab, and you would have seen he had 12 CS. So that means he did his red buff, and you would have seen he didn't have your blue buff. Do you see that? Yeah. Whenever he ganked, so you would have said, alright, I know my blue's still up. Uh, he didn't touch any of my jungle, otherwise he would have taken my blue, everything's still up. And he took two camps. Not including his own blue buff, because he took it. So it means he probably took raptors and just potentially anything else. So right now you're at a pretty good advantage. Let's see what you get. Got Skirmisher, Saber. This would be a lot better if you had Relentless Hunter. Fine though. Enemy bot lane's pushing up. If your MF wasn't backing, you'd want to come here. The very first thing you do when you back and you're leaving the base or you're even buying items is you want to see what your next move is. So coming here automatically is a great choice since your blue buffs up. If there is no if no gank materializes, you at least get your blue and you can maybe go to scuttle or something. So this is your best choice. If you were to come back top, if this gank didn't turn out or if Teemo pushed or something, you just took your golems, you have no red buff, it's a big pathing error so yep coming here is the right choice mf in my opinion went back at the wrong time these guys really have no way to get away from your gank because once you stun they're just fucked all mf has to do is just stand there and not die so yeah going blue buff's fine vagar's push no reason to really come here unless you saw wukong on his way let's turn back on fog so i don't get too many hints you while you're farming this you'd be looking at mid and bot since those are your next gank options you'd see Things that you look for on the gank is level, uh, health, and mana, and position of the wave. So for example, if Vagar was Oom and this guy was full mana, you might want to come here soon and help Vagar shove in the wave so he can back. But right now, there's really nothing to gank. Vagar's not backing up right when Ryze runs at him. What the hell was that? It's like, what, what do you think's going through his mind when he has a massive HP disadvantage and Ryze just walks at him? Uh, yeah, I have no idea. This happens a lot in silver, and I feel like it's, just on, me to, it's on me to be there and counter gank for no. the stupid plays they make. No, it's not. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. If it, it just That was obviously stupid, a bad play on his behalf, but I could have been there. You know, I could have passed straight there knowing that no. it was a possible. That, that was 100% his fault and not yours, and the reason why, even though theoretically shoulda, woulda, coulda, Let's say mm. you did come down here and they saw you, or let's say if Wukong didn't come or if Ryze didn't step up, all of this time would be wasted, and if they did see you, that gives them information to play off of. So if they see you mid, their bot lane might play more aggressive, their top lane might play more aggressive, and it hurts your team. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. Whenever you're seen as a jungler and you get nothing, it hurts your team badly. It takes away your, the invisible pressure. So this was actually the right choice, in my opinion, that the Vagar is just retarded. He even had it worded, and he fell for it. 
yeah. But yeah, he dies. Now, what I would do if I were you is so while you're watching this shit and you just took your wolves, I wouldn't go straight to your blue. I'd come mid and take the minion since Vagar doesn't have TP. If he had TP, so what? Okay, so it's fine. You can take your blue. Yeah. For some reason, Wukong walked away and you see him coming back now. Yeah, this was a misplay. I, I realized watching this, I should have went mid because that, that rise actually just stands there and <laughs> it yeah. presses B right there. Uh, dude, getting this troll. wave, this is like a full level up for you and a lot of gold. Yeah, okay. So you miss out. Yeah. Oh, do you give up that whole wave? You don't go for it? Shit. Yeah. The, the main thing is you got to be watching your best next potential plays while you're jungling. Because if you're always just staring at your camp, you'll never understand what's going on around you. All right. Okay. So while you're taking Scuttle, they ain't going to be fighting back. You're like, okay, next gank is probably bot lane. Rise just back. I can't gank him. You're seeing they're really pushing up. His dash is down. You're like, okay, here I go, probably. And then, I, okay, I have to back off now. Okay, good. Because <laughs> she died. If she stayed alive and if yeah. Pike was there, you would have gone for it. I fucking pinged that I was coming bot and Pike just went back. I was so fucking mad. Yeah, that's frustrating. Very frustrating. Uh, what are you buying? You really? Okay, you got a pink word. I was about to bitch at you for not buying a pink word. Got a pink word. That's good. <laughs> Whenever you're ahead or just playing jungle in general, getting a pink word can really help you either stay alive or assert more pressure. Hmm. Your golem should be coming up, yeah. I was surprised you went to your raptors. Try to keep tabs on your golem. That camp gives you the most experience in the game. Every camp, so like golems, raptors, wolves, gromp, they all have a two minute, 30 second spawn back. So it's just two minutes and a half. And you want to try to keep a general timer of it. The golems give the most gold and experience out of any camp by far. Listen to this. So much so that the first time you take them, they give 30% less experience than they normally do. Because they're that overpowered that they nerfed the beginning, which is why obviously getting early golem camps good since it will respawn and you can take it for the second time. But yeah, so for example, you should have gone to golems here. I was wondering why you're pathing the raptors, but it's all it's obvious that you weren't keeping tabs on it. Because yep. theoretically, golems into wraps, then you could cross down, but it'd be weird to do wraps, golems, and cross back because that's wasted pathing, but it's fine. While, go, while you're doing raptors, let's look around the map. If Teemo had a big wave and he was low on health, you could set up a dive, not the situation, so you immediately look away, you're like, nope, nothing I can do. If you saw Wukong, maybe, but nothing I can do. You look mid, eh, nothing I can do currently. Vagar's shoving, and then you look bot lane, and then you think, eh, maybe path towards bot. Which, which once again, if you would have done golems into wraps, it would have set up your better pathing towards here anyways, but it's fine. Let's see. Don't want to rag I need, on to, I need to start timing then a little better. The main one you just time is Golem, because let's say you take Golems and Raptors. In the future, next time you come back, you always know it's Golem's going to spawn in next and Raptors. You know what I'm saying? Because they're both yeah. 2 minute 30. All right. So Timo died, Renekton died. You look at the wave, nothing you really need to do there. You just keep farming. You look back mid, and you're like, all right, this is a potential gank. Rise is shoving up. Vagar has manned a stun. This is something. Now, let's say if it was the other way around, let's say if this was the Rise, and he was level 5, and then me, Vagar, was level 6. It might be a little bit riskier because he has one shot potential, but level 6 Rise isn't that scary. Level 6 Vagar yeah. is. Oh shit, what uh, is yeah, he doing? This, this is embarrassing, dude. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what? What? Wait a minute, what? Let me go back and watch that. I was fucking AFK. Is that what happened? No, I was looking at I was looking at mid lane and uh, wasn't paying attention to the end base. Shit. I get him back later though. <laughs> Dang, nah, it's all good. I wonder why he randomly came over here. That was pretty random. I guess he just decided he was ahead of you. His red spawned and your red spawned and he was just gonna show up. Yeah, how do you? I, I often struggle as Jax. I'm like. I know I can usually 1v1 auto attack champions pretty consistently. It's especially if they go for something like TMI early and I'm rushing a blood razor. It, it, what happened was you, you didn't get any value out of your E because while you had your E on, he stopped hitting you and he was hiding invisible. So your E basically mm -hmm. got you zero value. Okay. Yeah. And then it just turned into an auto attack battle and uh, Wukong has magic penetration in his kit. I think it's on his dash or his Q, so then he just killed you through his autos, and he does have more gold than you, admittedly. 
He does have significant. He had. He spent his gold. He has two kills. So you would have seen tab. Uh, two kills. But, so yeah. theoretically, let's talk about what you could have done better in this fight. I'll let. I'll give you a chance. So what could you have done better? Do you think? Um, probably as soon as I saw the control ward, just be aware of what's gonna happen as soon as he jumps on me. Hit him. Wait for the illusion. And then E once the illusion's dispelled, so I know it's him. Exactly. If you would have done that, hold just hold on to your spells. If he doesn't use any of his spells, theoretically you should win. So just hold on to your spells. You can use your W if you want. I'd hold on to your Q and your E, and then just wait for it to end. Timo pushes He's them so off. So, <laughs> yeah. So look at this. So you see how low on health he is. Yeah. All right, I think he's backing. If you were up sooner, you could have gone to his red, but you know your red's still up, so that's a viable option. Right. He's pushing away. I definitely pulled in here, just in case, you never know. He might've yeah. came back after taking a plant or something. <laughs> That'd be really lame. Where did he go? Yeah, so he's just chilling. He's tanking, taking that. So if you think Scuttle's up, I think what would have been the best option since you so both of you red spawned in you saw scuttle theoretically it should be up i might have checked this first and if scuttle wasn't there i would think wukong stayed and you might be able to go take his red and if the scuttle was up then you could just figure he recalled to go get his red but it's fine this is a good game okay he is a little early you e nice he wasted all but good kill stay shove the wave get the xp nope <laughs> that's fine yeah that's a big problem i need to prioritize that more it's, i feel like it's silver too people get tilted when you stay in the lane right i understand that if if they seem like someone who's mentally unstable there are times where i have just not touched it because i don't want them to afk but the the best thing that you can do is in that situation and especially at this point when the spawns are so long shove it and then once once you get to the turret and you can type say turret plating is worth more gold than minions or something because the turret plating gold's worth an f load man and guess what the turret plating gold goes away after the 15 is it the 14 or the 15 it's like the 14 or the 15 minute mark i think it's the 15 minute mark okay. or is it the 14 minute mark do you know i think it's like 14 15 it's like some weird number gold plating turrets i think it's 14. i don't know why they wouldn't just make it a nicer number than that yeah. Dude, I need a piss real quick. Can I take like 20 seconds? Yeah, that's fine. Turret plating. Pretty sure it's... Yep, 14 minutes. Damn, I'm getting hungry. All right, so did you find out the time? Yeah, it's exactly 14 minutes. Do you want to hear something oh, interesting? Okay. What's up? So currently in the meta, it's something that Tarzan's really good at abusing. It's really annoying to play against him. He'll pick early game jungle champions. And if you don't pick an early game jungle champion, you can't match him in a gank. You'll automatically lose. So you have to go elsewhere on the map. And what he does is he always camps his freaking bot lane. And the thing that's so strong about that is there, there's a thing called fortification. Do you know what that is? Yeah, bot lane's towers are stronger so they don't cheese the plate in early. No, it's actually the opposite. Oh, sorry, other, other yeah. lanes. Yeah, my bad. It's actually the opposite. Bot lane turret is the only outer turret where in the first five minutes of the game, it doesn't take 50% reduced damage. So by camping the bot lane, you get so much free extra gold. And uh, yeah, I just thought that was worth mentioning. So if you ever had an opportunity to camp your bot lane because they had heavy CC, et cetera, it's theoretically the best option. Okay. All right, let's go back. It's a, it's a massive complaint in the high elo community right now. Just how overpowered bot lane is and red buff yeah there's so many little weird idiosyncrasies about the game that aren't like clear like the whole red side jungle being completely broken thing is like something that's it's not very intuitive you know and yeah. then you just 
play the game and suddenly you're like level four and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's <laughs> happened. So, Ryza's dead, so instead of helping push wave, you're going for dragon, which is okay. I would like it more if you're bot lane. Okay, you're not going for dragon. What are you going for? Super cheesy gang. Oh shit, you checked his red. What I would do if I were you is, oh shit, yeah, I wouldn't do that. So tell me why this is the wrong play. I should wait for him to use his abilities on red. And what, what should you be doing while you're waiting? Uh, maybe take Krugs. That's what I'd probably do. So, <coughs> so if you're standing, so my cursor, can you see this? Yep. So let's pretend this is you. If you are standing here or any closer to here, as their minions walk through, so as their minions walk past here, where the fuck is it? Manual. Yeah. Uh, It'll see you. Yeah. And, and you got a time out. Very careful. Let, let's see if Bran walked over there. Mm, oh, Bran would have saw you. It's a good thing you didn't. So it's mm. rare. Usually the bot laners won't, but if they walk here closer, and even if you're in the inside, they'll see you. And then you'll need an escape route. So this was theoretically okay waiting. I would have done the riskier play though, because I'm greedy. I'll just hit the plant. Yeah, it seems like I got lucky. That was completely unintentional. Nice. So you see how Lucian is walking like a normal person, like in the middle? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh shit, he did come. You were right. You remember. Pink word, that's smart. Start it greedy, since you had no idea where Wukong was. Not only that, but your bot lane hadn't shoved it into turret yet so theoretically yeah. something might see you oh you're beating the shit out of me you have your ult nice you didn't even need oh, mf God. it's it's super jump bad, to plant though. jump to plant oh i know i know i know it's it's so embarrassing i get rooted oh. and then i misclick the fuck <laughs> right. i didn't want to knock mf into rise so i just let myself die. So first of all, the enemy bot lane should have moved years ago. Secondly, what do you think you should have done after you saw the Rizal? And you don't, bear in mind, you don't have smite up. What do you think you should have done here? Um, jump to the plant and bounce over the wall. Exactly. At that point, since Wukong's dead and your bot lane will have priority still, you probably could have just solo dragon or your option could have been to hit the plant wait till they clear out and buy wukong still dead then you can jump back over the wall and take it once they leave do you know what i mean mm, so okay. so you did you did a potent a very very a very very high risk for relatively little reward when you had two other really good options so he had, does end up getting you all right so they're chasing their flashes are down that's good information Wukong's red side, he's probably not going to come back here, I don't think. Let's see where he goes. Since it, since his red buff's down, and they know, and he knows he took it, the odds of him going back there are slim. Looks like he is, though. Looks like they took Dragon. It's even weirder that he's going to his red side now. I don't know. I guess you'll see him with his ward. So this is really weird pathing by him. So since there's not Dragon up over here, Harold spawning in soon. Unless you were to go to Golems first, this pathing makes no sense because it's just not efficient. That's not the point. You're going to your Golems first. Good job. Thanks for not going to Raptors first. There's really nothing for you to gank. Your teammates are just getting caught out. Kong's blue was coming up. This would be a good time to go over there, but... Alright, Raptors. Is he low? If he was low, you would dive this, but he's not. You, you're not going for your raptors instead you're going for this so the reason why i wouldn't have done this at this specific time is since vagar isn't in lane yes teemo is pushed which is really really good but since your mid laner isn't here mm. if let's let's pretend if this was worded or if god forbid someone randomly walks here you would be in a bit of trouble do you even have a word to get out let's find out uh it looks like you do okay so it's it's better than I thought. If you didn't have a word to get out, this would be really, really bad. Yeah. So you're going to cheese this. I would prefer if your mid laner was here. If Wukong comes up to gank Teemo since he's shoved. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, I feel like I have a tendency to go for super cheesy plays instead of like the right consistent play because people let me get away with it in silver. Right. But, how, yeah. how, how do you use your E here? Why is it doing that? Oh, it's on directed. That's BS. I was wondering why it kept going to other people. Hmm. Are you using your E early on this? Okay, I don't know why I was seeing that. That's fine. I would just dodge it a little bit more, but other than that, it's fine. So at that point, when you're seeing Teemo's dying, you look up here. Wukong has no ult. I wouldn't chase the Rise. He'd probably solo you. Plus, he's more fed than you. It's fine, you got the Herald. Right, he has no ult. His blue buff isn't coming up. So farming is fine. How much gold are you sitting on? You have your jungle item. So you've hit your power spike. And whenever you looked at him, because do you remember how every time you look at the opponent, you're supposed to press tab, like see mm -hmm. what they have. Because if they buy something from base, if you haven't seen him yet, you won't see what it is. So you would have seen, he doesn't have his jungle item. So potentially you could have beaten the shit out of him, but you're looking for other something else. So what's your thought process right here? When you're back well, right now, um. I think my process, my thought process was I want to lay rift somewhere, uh, provide some pressure, and then yeah, that's really it. So you want to get some use out of your rift? Yeah. Wukong no ult. He hasn't bought a jungle item yet. Nice. That was bad of him. Since his ult was down, there's no reason. He has zero kill pressure. He shouldn't have gone for that. I would go bot lane right now. You could take the scuttle first, or you could skip it. It doesn't matter. But Vagar just uses ultimate. It's not worth going there. Your kill pressure is going to be low. Hmm. Okay. Oh, never mind. That somehow Rise has no health now. Wait, where'd you go? Wait, where are you going? <laughs> where are you I, I going? I was a ward in the tribush, so I took the longest possible path to get to them. So, so whenever once again, whenever you're taking a monster camp or scuttle. You want to be looking at your most available gank. So, for example, looking at top lane wouldn't do you much good. This isn't that important. All you would do is, you would say, okay, Renekton is in his lane, I don't have to worry about him, and you'd be looking here, okay? Well, on lanes, yeah, you can't I'm, affect. Yeah, I'm bot lane. Right. So you just look bot, you look mid real quick, and you'd say, all right, he's dead. But it's fine. You go bot. Oh, shit. So pretend, let's say theoretically, this is just the snowball effect. If you would have made the right play, not only would a Vagar have lived, but he would have died. And okay. then you guys could have taken free turret plating. That's you don't want to get overly fixated on something without taking in all the information because a golden opportunity might slip you. So here the minions are gonna see you. Yep, they saw you. Mm, yeah. You know how I knew? Because of the minions on our side. E exactly. Like you have to learn that whenever the, they get up to a certain point, it's like right there they can see you. So theoretically, like let's say if these were good players, that would have. Not have completely fucked the gank since they're so far pushed, but it wouldn't have been ideal. Yeah, that's, this is what I'm talking about with Tunnel Vision, man. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm going for a gank! I'm going for a gank! <laughs> you get on the Lucian. That was fine. I, I just want to see how you use your abilities real quick to maybe if you used them too soon or something. So you activated your E really, really soon. You activated it before you were even in jump range. Let me slow it down so we can see it better. So, since you're already behind them and they're walking towards you for their escape route, you don't actually have to start your E until you're actually like in auto range, unless you're maybe trying to get a double stun if you think they walk together. So at this point, when you see they're together, that's when you activate your E. Okay, that's a little bit different. I think the main problem here is that I wasn't using the map, so I didn't know their flashes were done. Uh, I, th I thought they were going to flash my stun and get away, so... Uh, so you're just trying to make sure it landed? Mm -hmm. But right. I would, I, if I'd been paying attention, I would have seen that they used their flashes. Right. Overall, the gank was played decently. Nothing to really be much said there. Let's turn off the chat. Like, I don't know why this doesn't work on my replay. I got Tarzan to say some pretty juicy shit, but I can't pull it up. <laughs> I don't know why your team wasn't helping you there. Nice. 
<laughs> she got it. So, so something to think about when you're taking these turret plates is you already have a minion way, so you're not dependent on the Herald to take the plates right now. And the Herald does true damage to the turret. And you know what happens every time you take a turret plate? Uh, you get gold. Juicy gold. That's right, you get gold. But you know what else also happens? No. Whenever you take a turret plate, the turret gets... Do you see the stack right here? After you just mm -hmm. took a plate? Okay. The turret gets a fuckload of armor and magic resist based off the number of nearby champions. So for each nearby champion, it gets extra armor and magic resist for each plate you take within like 30 seconds of each other, right? So it has two stacks since you just took two, okay? Oh, and these, fuck? Yeah, and the, these two stacks are really strong stacks since there's three of you. So it, it kind of got six stacks in a way. Do you see what I'm saying? So it gives more magic resistance per enemy champion per tower placing you take? It, it gets more Jesus. armor and magic resist per enemy champions nearby when you take a plate and per plate you take. So that's why it has two stacks because you just took two plates. So by starting out with the Herald, you would have actually gotten, since the Herald is true damage, not magic or physical. So you'd get way more value hitting the turret first and then using the Herald to break the last two or three plates once, it, once you already stacked it up really high. Do you know what I mean? Okay, jeez, I didn't even know that. See, that's one of yeah. those weird things that you never gets explained to you. Right. It's just one of those things that you know or you don't. Good jump, just run straight path away. Don't know what he's doing. That's not gonna turn out well if he hooked him. <laughs> <laughs> like what if Bryce had flash, you could just one shot him two levels up. I think that's funny, whenever you see a hook champ, just say, I have a hook so I'm gonna use it. This is fine, all your camps are up. You can do a full clear here. There's nothing else on the map to really take. What I would, what I might have done is, since that a thought process you want to try to learn is tapping into what the enemies are thinking and going through. So if you were the enemy bot lane right now, what would you be thinking after they just took your shit and the enemy's back? Like, what do you think they're gonna do? Who, who are you talking about? The, the enemy, enemy bot the enemy bot lane who just got killed. You took their turret platings. What do you think they want to do right now? Uh, probably shove this lane. Exactly. So deny the experience. Exactly. So one thing that you might have considered is when your bot lane was backing, instead of doing your jungle, this is just something to try. When 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 you instead of doing your jungle, you could have backed and came back to lane like with Pipe, for example. And then as they push up, you would just kill him again. But he might not do that. Okay, yeah, he is. It's it's very common though for any laner, whenever they die or they lose something, it's that mental urge to try to get back what you lost and they'll be irrational and i don't even think they worded okay they did lay a word but right. they are pushed up so far that if you went over the wall it wouldn't matter so instead you're okay. farming so this is what you were saying about you over farming right sometimes you just you'll farm because you don't see a potential opportunity yeah so instead you could have been here with pike you could have hit the plant another two kills and a first turret so instead you're farming which, if you had Conqueror, might be the better choice. Good job picking up the wave, not letting that go to waste. Alright. Yeah, they're, they're just trying to get back what they lost in their minds. They just lost $100 and they're trying to scheme to get it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting effect. These are the kind of things after the fact, I'm like, oh yeah, of course, but I never think you're in the game. Right. A little bit of patience, like just like backing, can sometimes go a long way in the right situation. So you did a full clear. It's not the end of the world. You had an efficient clear right here. You got a lot of gold and XP. Mm -hmm. So are you saying I should have, instead of full clear in here, go back and then come back, buy and then come back and do the full clear or something else? Yeah, so like in this situation, ideally, like if you could have redone it in this exact situation, you would have recalled with your pike, came back to lane, used the plant, gotten a double kill, taken turret, recalled, and then you could have done a full clear. Hmm, okay. Makes so sense. plus it's also, this is like an extra tad bit of information. It was around the 14 minute mark, so now these gold plates have expired. So the only extra gold to be gained from these turrets is by getting first turret. So like this gold okay. plating doesn't exist anymore at 14 minute mark or later. But yeah. And I'm wasting red buff here by going back to base. 
Yeah. Oh. That, that that's fair to consider in the mid and late game that's not quite it doesn't matter quite as much but yeah in the early game it's definitely a huge deal to not oh, make I remember this is this is cringy <laughs> oh, God. does he have dash oh, okay yeah. he, he really held on to his dash hey that what should have happened here is when you came in for this gank since he shoved up so far, it's okay for you to come this way. If he was hovering, you could have gone around, but you can't. It was kind of okay. I would have held on to your dash when he walked at you. Did you see that spot where he ran yeah. towards you? And you yeah. still, and you still have all of this distance to chase him down. So hold on to it for a bit if he's just gonna walk at you, because you can just walk at him auto and then start your E. So now you don't have your Q. So what a, what could have theoretically happened at this point is he could have just dashed away. And let's say Wukong mm. came, or let's say he dashed and flashed. But for some reason, he decides to fight you. That was really weird. Yeah, this Renekton was pretty troll. He's a goofball. Also, something that every player needs to do, regardless of role, is whenever you're about to take a full-on 1v1, you always want to press tab and get a quick glance at their items. Because sometimes you might be sitting on more gold than they are, but you haven't spent it, or vice versa, you know what I mean? So in this example, you would have seen, okay, he only has Merc, Treads, and he has a team at. I'm a Jax with a Blood Razor, and I'm going to smash his head in, right? All right. And I knew, to be fair, I knew he was behind his team mode. I got team mode ahead early, right. and he died another two times, I think. But, uh, yeah, you just press tab. That's a really good habit to get into, for sure. Oh, nice. I can ping. You see that? Oh, shit. I didn't know you could do that. Looks like I can't do the special pings. Shit, where are you? All right, so what just happened on the map? Okay, your bot lane's dead. This is gonna be a really hard gank. In a situation like this, you'd wanna kill the person who has CC first, because if you went for Lucian and he CC'd you, you'd be fucked. Yeah. Oh, uh, shit! Oh no! <laughs> that, was so bad. that was tragic. So, just curious, what was your thought process in this part? It was so stupid. I, I knew, I knew what you said about uh, Brand. I was like, okay, I have to get to Brand, and then I just fucking flubbed the the range. I thought I was so much closer than I was. Uh, do you think? Just out of curiosity, do you think? Do you think losing turret played into your thought process at all here? Like, yeah. In, I really don't. I've heard that turrets are like huge, so I'm like try and defend the turret. Right, else. right. I figured that's probably what happened here because if you would have taken the plant, or if you would have mm -hmm. just like waited, you probably would have had a double kill. But yeah, with outer turrets, especially once the turret plating's gone, and with outer turrets and they're already low on health, like giving up a free double kill for the slightest chance of maybe saving it is never worth. Just keep that in mind. Okay. So, oh, a theoretical Jeez. double- I assume you die here, do you? Nah, they just walk away. They just walk away, alright. So a theoretical double kill turned into you, guaranteeing using your flash for, like, less than a probably 10% chance of saving turret. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, that was... But So if I'd gotten the double, double kill, kill, would it have been worth, even if the turret died? Oh! thousand percent dude thousand percent especially because look what, what would your next play be after this double kill uh that dragon man exactly so dragon. dragon and then Magic after too. after mm -hmm. dragon what are you gonna do uh this is where i struggle i'm good at just seeing objectives but when there's nothing on the map and you have to do it i don't know so at this point depending on what their spawn timers are if they haven't spawned in yet you could take their bot turret since it's low or what you mm -hmm. could do is you might be able to gank mid. It just depends on what's going on over here. So basically bot turret, go here. Assuming you have enough health, right? Okay. So just that that's in League of Legends, why how it can how you can have if you're playing optimally, if you're or if you get lucky, you can have you ever felt like you're just carrying like mad crazy? Uh every now and then. Very rarely. But yeah. Cause it, it's like there's an in nearly an infinite number of possibilities like an infinite number of different universes in any given game so if this situation instead you got the double kill not only would you have all that more gold but you probably could have saved your flash too you could have gotten dragon you probably could have gotten this as well 
uh, or maybe you could have done something else and it would have snowballed it that much harder but in this unit in this particular universe yeah it just went this way but that that's just one small mistake can make the game way easier for you or way harder just depending on who's the one making it yeah i think that's what's so tilting about the game I'm, i think i'm quite good at the early game the first five minutes and then i'll do one fucking throwy play and then throw back everything in their favor yeah that's why in low elo it's bad to surrender because both teams are making so many mistakes yeah shit what's going on here wait could you guys have won this did you look at brand's mana like was he um Oh, dude. So do you think you yeah. could have won this or no? So look at Wukong's health, Brand's mana. Look at Lucian's mana. I don't think I could have 1v3, but with MF, if her ult was up, yeah. So if you could have done this situation over again, what would you have done? I think I just would have been there instead of going for wolves. That's like I said at the early, at the start here. I, I'm at the wrong place at the wrong time all the time. If I would just gone to Dragon, my team probably would have came, and we could have done a 3v3 or a 2v3. I could have chunked them up. That's 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 a good point and that's fair enough. But like right now, if you were right here right now, what would you do right now? Uh okay. E jump onto Brands, get a quick kill on him. You think you can get the brand from here? No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I can't get the brand. I think I actually try and go for brand, and I can't. So let's see if I could do anything here. I would. All right. I would just walk away, honestly. I don't think I can take that. Just the two of them in there. Walk away? Yeah. I don't, I don't think I could take them both it's at level 10. Wukong's level 11. He's going to knock me up. Lucian might ult me as well. I don't know if it's up or not. So if I were you, like in this situation, and because like, we can't know for sure, right? Because we can't do it. But if I had to bet money what the best play would be right now, Mm -hmm. would be uh so he's um he's basically um but he's basically one spell one spell you don't know if wukong has ult so you need to be mindful of when you press your e if he dashes on you you're basically gonna have to start your e because if he knocks you up and lucian starts auditing you you're gonna be in trouble so what if i what i would do right now since mf's running up is i would stand right here and block if wukong doesn't have flash he can't get out of dragon pit lucian could potentially dash over you can let him go if i were you i would hold this space right here Hell, you could even turn around right now, hit the plant, eat a few fruit, and block Wukong from leaving. Do you see what I mean? Mm, that makes sense. If Bran, Bran doesn't have enough mana for really any spells, he could do maybe one or two. If he steps up, he'll die. You block Wukong off. Worst case situation, what will happen here is if Ryze walks up, and you have vision here. If you didn't have vision here, it would be a different story because you'd be scared of Ryze, right? Since you don't see him. But since yeah. you do have vision... Worst case situation, Ryze walks up, you see him, and you leave. Or Wukong has flash, and he flashes over the dragon wall. But basically, you just let him leave for free. And yeah. it's just that, that that's a smaller thing, and it takes a little bit more, more calculations, because you'd have to take into account their mana. But that was just something to look for, is how much mana, etc. That's a really good point, yeah. And then again, again, if I'd just been looking at the map, knowing where MF was, I would have thought, oh, maybe we can zone him. Right. And then drop an ult on him when he can't escape. Exactly, she even did have ult at the time. Mm -hmm. Just shove mid. Three of them are dead. Nice, that's really good. Baron's not up. It's up in like three minutes, so I just shove mid. That's fine. That was a really good fight. I guess the enemies tried to fight before they even recalled while they were low on mana. Hmm. Now, if Baron was up, since the gold's like relatively close, you guys haven't like secured yourselves as the winning team necessarily. And their respawns weren't long enough for you to probably take inhibitor comfortably. If Baron was up, you guys probably would have just taken Baron instead of just getting this turret. And now, if it was an inhibitor turret, that might be different, but unless you're getting an inhibitor, like, if you have to choose between Baron or an, inhi or an Inhibitor, in a lot of situations, it's a toss-up. But, since you couldn't even have a chance at Inhibitor, Baron would have been the right choice, but there's no Baron. Okay. I'll take these. Yeah, Wait. they respawn as soon as I walk by them, and I completely miss them. Where are you going? Go to push bot. Uh, the journey for bot lane. 
I guarantee you someone's coming to grab this wave. Who who is it? Yeah, yeah Rise. You'll see that all the time. So if the enemies have nothing going for them, like there's nothing on the map to take, like objectives in terms of dragon or anything over here, what will happen is whenever they look on the map, they look for a wave to grab. So for example, there's probably someone coming for this and Renekton came for the mid one. So what if on the enemy team, what's going to happen is who, if they don't see someone going for this, they're going to go for it. So let's see who's going top. Hmm. Okay, no one's going top yet, but Ryze is coming here. He's going here. I'm surprised, honestly, someone didn't peel off for this wave. That's really surprising. Yeah, but Ryze comes here. If I was Evelyn, what I would have done is I would have waited and I would have come here and I would have like this. Mm. And I would have waited right here or right here. And right as they came in, I would have just killed him. Yeah, that's something I never think about. Looking at the map from their perspective and finding the easy farm and knowing they're going to come there, that's like super... Yeah. Super advanced. You got to put yourself in the mind of your victims. If you can know what they're thinking, you can abuse them. Yeah, that pathing's fine. You don't know where they are. Oh, what is he doing? You could potentially one-shot Bran. He has Rylias, it seems. Yeah, yes, Rylias. I'd kill him. Does he have flash up? No. You can't get to him, though. There's really not like there's so many kills in this game, but I feel like there's nothing going on in this game. It's just like random kills happening. Yeah. Welcome to Silver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what items do you have? Are you beefy yet? Not quite. You still don't have Trinity. They're almost really strong. Is there anyone that you can't solo on the enemy team? Maybe you rise? The, I think a big problem I have with Jax is I, I know the Trinity Force Shojin power spike is like G, it's like GG. So I just like, in my mind, all I'm thinking about is get Trinity Force Shojin and just kill everyone and win the game. Right. So I, I, I don't think of it like these early or mid game plays, just snag a kill here and there. I'm always like farm, 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 take towers, defend. Right. Renekton's pushing up. Don't know what he's doing. This is easy kill. Yeah, you see it. You waited. That was good. You were patient. Because if he had this warded, mm. then you obviously would have backed up. But yeah, this was fine. If you thought he was still going to push up waiting in here, since this most likely isn't worded because it's deeper and off the track, that was fine. That's good. And that would come up at this point. Why are you yeah, waiting I, so long? What are you doing, bro? I, I know. I waited way too long there. So the main thing you're looking for when he's pushing up is whenever Renekton runs out of minions, what do you think he's going to do? Uh... What do you mean? When he runs out of enemy minions? When he runs out of his own minions, what do you think he's going to do? Uh, he's going to walk backwards. Exactly. Because he's gonna not only going to be tanking the wave, but even if he kills it, what is he going to do? He can't take turret. So the moment these minions, like, the, you know, they're going to die, like, you need to be moving. So, for example, they die, and he, well, Timo gives it away, and he runs away. Timo, that was kind of weird. Yeah. Get the kill, it's fine. I would honestly stay top. There's a dragon coming up. Which one is it? If it was an infernal drake, I'd go. Otherwise, I'd stay top. The reason why is you already see enemies over here. If you guys stay top, it 100% forces them to come over here. Since you already killed one of them, they don't have anyone to match you. And if any of them do come top, your teams can probably just take dragon anyways. You take the scuttle. So in your mind, what are you doing when you leave top here? When Renekton's dead and you see enemies over here? I think I'm running. I don't remember. I think I'm going to dragon to try and secure the dragon. But could be wrong. Which one is it? Oh, it's an infernal. All right, let's see. Nope. They killed your Vagar and your Pike. I don't think you're going to get this dragon. Hmm. Yeah, they don't spawn. Vagar doesn't spawn in in time. The enemy should get this. I guess we'll find out. Okay, yeah. So, this is the example of risk versus reward. The main risk of you leaving here is if your teammates would died when the enemies were over here, you backing gives you zero value. 
Now, if yeah. you stayed, you have the guaranteed value of the enemies have to send at least two people or more. Because if they send one, you're going to kill them. And if they send none, you and team are going to smash their base. Yep. I actually knew that. I'm trying to... Are you I'm, I'm trying to force myself to fight more, so I'm trying to force myself into team fights since I play so passively, and I have a tendency to just split push mindlessly. But that was the right play. Yeah, there, there's no, there's no shame in doing any given play style. It's all situation driven. Yeah. You can kill Brown. You have flash up. Yeah, this was pretty troll. I don't know why they came at turret range here. Nice. Because they don't understand. They just think because there's two of them, they can fight you. Yeah, that was a big swing there. Nice job. This is the point where we just kind of took off. Yeah, you're popping now, man. You got Trinity. You can just one-shot them. Now, I'll tell you what. If Brand had Hourglass and if he would have stunned you, that would have gone a lot differently. But I assume you pressed tab mm -hmm. right now. Nah, he doesn't got Hourglass. Uh, I didn't actually do that. I got lucky there. <laughs> but, but I will from now on. No, write that down whenever you have time. So you know, do you remember when you were waiting right here, mm -hmm. and you could see them? Mm -hmm. What you would want to do is you press tab. Right, what items does he have? And you're just looking for things that would change the situation. So you scan it. You say, okay, we're fine, and then you do it. Or if you had hourglass, and it might you might be, you know what? Maybe we don't risk it here. Yeah. Oh, nice e. That was good. Nice job. I got really lucky with this Renekton. and he I don't think he understood how to play against Jax. Yeah, you well you predicted that one pretty well. He flashed down you and you knew it was, you knew it was coming because the way he was acting. Dragon. You probably didn't need to back to be honest. Because you just killed like all the enemies. Mm. How much health do you have? Yeah, wait, why are you backing? Look. So two of them just spawned in, so they're dead and they're spawning in. You guys killed Renekton, and I think you're gonna kill Rise here. Yeah. I'm so sure back. Yeah, I would just get Dragon. It's fine though. That's just that that shows that. Do you find yourself ever looking at death timers or when people are about to spawn in or anything? Every now and then I will. It's and obviously when you get an ace, it's like oh okay, go take something. But, right. Yeah. Like I said, I, sometimes I just tunnel vision on Trinity Force and Spear Shows and the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I I know what you mean. Once you get more you comfortable with the game, you'll be, find yourself being more relaxed and just noticing more things. Like if you're if you're nervous in a crowd of people, you're probably not going to notice a lot of little things. But if you're just relaxed and calmly analyzing everything, you could probably pick people out of the crowd. Right. Yeah. Shit, oh, they're fucked. That Teemo shrimp will last forever. Nice job following that up. That dragon boy. In my opinion, in solo queue, Flame, Drake, and Wind Drake are the two strongest Drakes. Unless you have a Soraka, in which case you want to get Ocean Drake, because that's the strongest. The, a quick little history lesson you said you just started playing Windrick used to be the worst dragon because it only used to be movement speed outside of combat but as of I believe like six months ago they gave it movement speed in combat as well it's just a little bit less so it's really damn strong oh, okay I thought it was out of combat still should yeah. read the tilt -tick. it's I think it one Windrick six percent out of combat movement speed but in combat it's two percent mm. yep okay Movement speed is the most expensive stat in the game to buy, and it's the hardest one to buy since not many items give it. Yeah, this is fine. You're letting your team push up. If they weren't here, obviously you'd be pushing it, but you're just setting. Yeah, this is something I would do. Exactly. That's fine. It's not quite as good since you don't have sweeper. Like, theoretically, it can be running over wards and shit. Yeah. But it's still, in my opinion, the right play. So the moment you see him... I should have oh yeah, him so much earlier. Nah, it's fine. You were on this side. Now, what I will say is, in situations like these where you're trying to do two things at once, like watching this side or watching this side, I would try to lay your ward a little bit more sp specifically. So, for example, this if you were gonna like wait in here, I would have laid the ward here or here to try to give more vision of the opposite side that you're standing in. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, good point. A, a really good example of this is let's say you're waiting to kill the enemy on their red buff, all right, and you're waiting in the bush. If you're waiting right here and you already worded it right here, why wait there? What you should do is you should be waiting in this bush because let's say they, they drag it into the bush early or let's say they go to ward this immediately. If you're standing there, what's going to happen? They'll just run away or engage. They'll, they'll have more information than they need to have. Exactly. So, But in this way, you'd be giving yourself more information, but it's fine. Ryze ends up using his ult. He dies anyways because he's a dingleberry. <laughs> Wukong, Wukong no clone. He's level 13. You're level 14. Oh, you, you, so you could tank turret if you have your ult on. Yeah, that was a really bad ult. Wukong ult. Wukong ult is one of the highest impact ults in the game. It's the only thing that gives his kit any meaning. If you ever use a Wukong ult and you only ever get a kill and you don't win the team fight, it was not used properly. Mm. We'll probably go help these guys out. That's what you're doing. You can help them out or you could honestly get turret. At this point, since they just all died but Bran, I probably would have stayed and broken turret since it's just him. But if they were all still alive, did they run into a mushroom or something? I think Bran did, yeah. Is this a Lucian? Lucian and Bran. The enemy spawn times were actually really long. In hindsight, I would have just stayed and broken turret. Because you see how long those are? Okay. You, pr you probably could have gotten both turrets off that. Like, if they were about to spawn in, then sure, going for that and, like, like playing the odds of hopefully they're both still alive so i can kill them but the spawn times are so long okay Bran, oh he's so dead am i do you feel like you're handling this information because there's more things i want to tell you but i don't know like are you can you handle no, more? this is solid man uh, like I said, I think my biggest problems are just like knowing when to be in the right place at the right time and then not ganking properly and, and tunnel visioning. If tunnel visioning, so a lot of this is really helping me out, man. A lot of the stuff you're saying I've, I'm already familiar with because I've watched all your videos basically. <laughs> uh, but um, the more complicated stuff like when to be where at the right time is what I really struggle with. Oh, okay. Well,. I'm happy to hear that. This is just something small since you already had vision of him with the ward. And you're right here, by the way. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know you're here, obviously, unless this was warded. And since you can see him, if this, if he did know you were here, he'd probably move differently, right? But he's not. Yeah. So in this situation, you could have even just like walked up, saved your dash if you wanted to, because he might have flashed it. But this is perfectly fine. It's just like theoretically in the future, in a slightly different situation, you might want to save your dash a little bit longer. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so like wait for him to walk into me instead since you can tell he's not he doesn't know I'm there Right, I'm saying that's an option like let's say if there's in a different in this situation It's fine since he's secluded There's no way he's gonna be able to get away even if he does flash because he'll just chase him down in queue But like in a different situation, let's say he had a teammate or let's say it was brand and Lucian walking this way You'd still want to have your dash up to get to Lucian. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in that okay. yeah, that would have been way better just walk into him, but in this situation. It's totally fine Makes sense Again, I, I just get so tilted by people flashing away from situations they should have died in. Yeah. It, it, it really frustrates me, so so I kind of always assume they have flash and just yeah. like don't give them a chance. But like I said, if I'd been paying attention, I would see he doesn't have flash. All right. Oh. Nice. So you're pushing the waves, waiting for your team. Totally fine. They're leaving base. Why are we seeing both teams? Oh, you guys have that many wards. Jesus, I thought I, well, we were seeing both sides because there's so many wards. Yeah, they did some work. On the, Pike did work on the wards. Oh, shit. Wukong's so fucked. No, this is bad. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I have to go back. <laughs> this is so cringe. So he's trying to solo Wukong two levels up, dashes away, gets the ult. You find him. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, he's giving you trouble with that clone. Yeah. It's Pike. Oh, you're swing. eased down, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's a tough. Big swing. Thousand gold shutdown, man. It's, it's shit like that where I'm like, fuck. Why did I do that? So I guess it would have been at this point. It's a little bit unfortunate timing. 
But since you guys are so deep in their jungle, even though you do have good vision, you have to save your E for a lot of times on Jax for when you need it. And you, unfortunately, you activate it like a second and a half before you see Renekton. Right here. You see Renekton like right as you stun him. So mm. then it's like right as you activated it. So at this point, when they kill him, I feel like you can kill them, but only when your E's back up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could have taken them. I'm really ahead right now. So if I were you at this point, what you'd want to do, you hit your flashes up. So even if they flash on, you can still get away. You can walk at them like this, but then immediately, like, don't take an optimal path, like running straight away, because they'll probably leave you. Do you know what I mean? But hmm. instead, if you run a path that is, is suboptimal, like let's say like at an angle away from them, they'll probably chase you. Do you know what I mean? Oh, dude, that's some... Yeah, like, game yeah, 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 you're like tricking them. Because if you run straight away, they're like, oh, we probably won't get him and he's fed. But if you run at an angle away, they're like, okay, he's misplaying, let's kill him. But you instead, you fight them, your E's not up. Or if you really want to, you could could have walked it here and been within Q range of the plant. So if things were got freaky, because you miscalculated, you could just jump to the plant. But it's fine, you die. You learned your lesson. Yeah. Too trigger happy with that E. <laughs> Uh, that's that's uh that's honestly probably one of the top ten strongest abilities in the game for like what it could yeah, potentially it's so do. fucking busted now. They just killed your Teemo. They're pushing up mid. They can potentially take a Baron here while Teemo's dead. So just make sure you don't get picked. Try to get a word on Baron. Figure out if they're taking it. Okay, you see Rise right. Okay, they're probably not doing Baron. So you don't even have to rush straight here anymore. See, yeah, they're definitely. Now you guys are in a worse situation. They can start setting up Baron again. Oh, nice, 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 nice. I didn't, th I didn't think it was gonna turn out like that. Do you have your spear? Yeah, that is. Uh, I knew yeah, it. Dude, I'm telling you, when you get spear, it's just like face, face mash the keyboard and win the game. It's so stupid. Dude, I was gonna say, I was gonna be like, dude, use your E way too early here, but then it was back up like immediately. Holy shit. So you use your E, you, you know what your champ can do with spear, and then you just start wrecking them. That's fine, that's really good. Nice. Hell yeah. MF just nearly <laughs> killed you. <laughs> I, I was gonna be so sad if that bounced again. There oh, you know what you also did when you died here? Yeah, this one mistake, do you know what that did? Uh, I gave him a huge shutdown gold. Yeah, you had 700 shutdown, so they got a thousand gold off of killing you. Yeah, that was, that was unfortunate. So stupid. Yeah. That's why people, like, making one mistake can mean so much more than, like, what it seems. Here, the, I, I, could, I know I could have played this better. I could have jumped in there. But... Dude, you're, you know what happened, right? You're, mm. you're spooked, dude. Wukong's spooking you out with his clone. You're, you're scared he's gonna clone again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Could have been, yeah. <laughs> this is a spooky monkey. Oh, man. Yeah, you could have absolutely crushed them because you would have looked at his items and be like, okay, he has two MR items, and Lucian has zero armor items. You just rip right through them. Mm -hmm. No one ever expects that wall jump either. Exactly. Vegar's so fed. It doesn't really matter who you go for at this point, they're going to die. This is... In the late game, things get a lot less complicated for the most part. Unless there's a lot of split pushing involved, it just turns into... Mm -hmm. Generally not doing bad things. Nice. I would have gone for Brand, honestly. Mm. Yeah, a lot of indecision here. Because you can say, well, Rice has CC, <laughs> Brand has CC, how do I decide which one? Do you know what the difference is? Well, I can kill Brand pretty much instantly. Do you know what the other difference is? Uh, no. Do you want me to give you a hint? Uh... Look, <laughs> look at their items. What's the big difference? What's going to be a bigger issue if they're still alive? Um, let's see, where is Brand? I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, so Brand has Riley's Crystal Scepter. If he, yeah. if he doesn't die immediately, you're just going to get perma slowed, like what you're seeing here. Oh, He's... right. Okay. So it took you much longer to kill him, and he got you really low because of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just knowing about the items they got. 
Yeah. That's totally I really fine. Need to get, I really need to get better at that. Totally fine, dude. Just tiny little things. It's easy It's easy to pick something and shit on it, like you see on those Food Network channels with the judges rating things. It's a lot harder to actually fucking play the game than people realize. Because it's just so much little shit you have to be calculating constantly. To, right. theor to theoretically play perfectly, which is impossible. This was so troll, this part. <laughs> Oh, I'm you're just sure. baiting it's him? just in thing. I don't know what the fuck that was. Nice. You just, do you see how easy people are to bait? Like, what would have happened here if you ran away? They would have 100% chased you. If you'd like did a diagonal angle. Yeah. I could see that, yeah. Wait, did you just ult? Yeah, see. I try too hard to tilt the enemy team with uh, <laughs> ult spells. I, I hit my R there, so I think I'm back. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Unlucky. Luckily, your ult's on such a <coughs> low cooldown. Yeah, really down. With how fed you are, and with having double infernals, and just the team comp, so like all that information, you could easily team fight, or you could easily split push. It doesn't really matter. Either one would lead to a win. Mm -hmm. Okay, Wukong's dead. You guys could... Probably just grouping in. He's on a 50 second timer. Or you could just take Baron. Either one's fine. Your minions are pretty far down. You guys could have definitely ended, but this is fine too. Yeah. Yeah, should have ended. I fucked around with Baron and we waste a lot of time doing it. Yeah, Brand. Brand probably has the most damage dealt on their team, if I had to guess. Yeah, let me check that real quick. I bet you he does. Brand. 27. I guess he's he's almost the most. He's tied for he's he's barely second. So he's pretty close. Wukong somehow had the most. All right. Uh, Timo died. Their health. They're low. Nice. Good pick. You could do Baron or shove right now. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so this is one of those situations where I thought Baron was the right call, and I, I spam pinged and tried to force MF to come. The team is we coming. Yeah, we split the team up, and then they fucking die. When in reality, I should have just stayed with my team because they won't they're not going to come to Baron. Right. They won't listen, yeah. That, yeah, you definitely have the right perspective on that. That's totally right. This is a big mistake. Yeah, this happens a lot, dude. Even if you're in like platinum, a lot of times your teammates won't use their brain. They want it. They're like a sperm. They only know one way. They just keep going straight. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. Like top lane, they're not gonna get the turret. Let's just take the Baron. Well, yeah, it's like Brand and uh, Rise are still up. Do you really want to siege against Brand Rise? What if they CC your Jax as he goes in? You'll be fucked. This, this was still a really bad call. It's pike down. Shit. <sighs> yeah, just run, just leave it. Just leave it. <laughs> Brandon and MCC, that'll be bad. Mm -hmm. A lot of non cooperation. Block, block. Oh, shit. That's actually tragic. I thought Vagar had ult. Did Vagar not have ult and he was actually blocking that? Okay, Vagar doesn't have ult. Why is he doing this? He has no ult and he's gonna try to tangle with Lucian. <laughs> Holy shit, that's tragic. Okay, so right now all you, you can do is- ult, but fortunately just watch it into me. Wow. Holy cow. Nice job. You can just shove top, take red buff, doesn't matter too much. Just do something. Or you can recall and buy. It's another infernal drake. I get red buff go infernal. Nice. Make sure you smite it. Oh you got it, nice. Kill that brand, dude. Get him out of the way. Yeah, brand's tearing you up. Yeah. So, and also something to keep in mind is 
not only is he the one with the CC, like after, af like for example, after Wukong has already knocked you up and shit, I guess he stunned you. If you were to jump to Bran, like as he comes back in, Wukong yeah. won't be able to hit you because he's melee. He'll have to wait till his dash is back up. But if you stay here, they're both hitting you. If you jump to him, Wukong can't hit you immediately. Do you know what I mean? Yep, that was the right call to jump to him for yeah. sure. It's just something to look for. If you're going to take damage from two people, if you can change it to just one, that's the better option. And oh, you would have also avoided the rise too. You would have avoided this whole burst right here. I didn't even Another. see rise. Another thousand gold. Yep. That's the tough thing about League, man. Even if you're ahead, just a few fuck ups and it doesn't even matter. Yeah. What is he doing? <laughs> oh yeah, so I, I, we lost that team fight. Well, we lost it for many reasons, but Teemo was also split pushing top the whole time, I think. He and then he just turned. sits here at Baron for like the next three minutes. What if they <laughs> lay a pink actually word. turned out really well. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> it just, what? It's oh, like, it geez. works, but it's so troll. <laughs> like, he's, he's playing a very high risk, medium reward game. All it takes is one pink and it's done. Yeah. I could potentially lose you the game this late, honestly, if you die. You're the only thing your team has that's like that that's like certain, like with how strong you are. So this is what do you, what I'd do like you? Some, I'd I'd like some feedback on my decision making in this fight because I think <laughs> I, I did this weird. Did it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I was. I guess. Before I'm waiting I... for them to use their cooldowns right now, so I can go in a 1v5. That... If that's your plan, I guess the main thing is, why are you standing so far back? Like, you're you're like a full screen away. You can't even see, you're like literally like two screens away. Yeah. Like screen and a half. It's just too far away. If you're gonna wait, like wait like on the wall so they can't see you or something, or wait right here, but waiting over there. Even if they use their abilities, by the time you get over here, they'll be back up. Okay. Did you think someone was going to flank over here? I thought there was someone in the jungle where we didn't have vision. Oh, okay. It's I a didn't bit... want them to, to know I was there, but... Ah. Uh, yeah, they're fucked. What? What? MF? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Get him, get him, get him. Either one. Nice. Yeah, you should win. That's that's game. Is it? Okay, thank god he didn't go for Baron. <laughs> they really wanted to do Baron because I'd flame them about doing Baron. I'm like, oh, you could go and do Baron and play for another 15 oh, minutes. Man. Yeah, I, I, th I think like my biggest weaknesses are the mid game. Just uh, trying to sustain a lead and claw back a lead if you lose early games. Early and late, I seem to have a decent grasp of and my biggest point for improvement. It seems like the mid game, but I don't know. Yeah, I think you hit it pretty much on the head. Your early game decision making overall early game was fine. You're basically just doing early cheese with a strong, a decently strong early game champion. That's totally okay. That whole bush thing, if you're, if you mm. want them to know you're there or something because you want them to think you're starting here, that's fine. But if you're going to do that, coming through this way, because if you're in here and they see it, that, that could turn out really badly. Even though it's a low percent thing, no reason to take that risk. Coming through here, and then whenever you are ready to ward, don't worry, they'll see you. So you can wait in here, they won't know. You ward it, and uh, you can do your thing. In terms of early game and the mid game, during the whole game, something you weren't doing is you weren't looking. So like, let's say you're taking a camp no matter where you are, especially early, this is important. If you see the enemy jungler, immediately click on him, because if he, right when he goes out of vision, you can't see it. You know what I mean? You can't see like what timer his buffs are on. Do you know what I'm saying? So you immediately need to click on him, figure out, okay, he did red then blue. Okay, he has blue buff. So that means he took my blue buff. After you've figured out that thing, you press tab and you see how much CS he has. And then you can figure out where he's been. And then like whenever they're in vision, you want to pay attention to where they lead to. Like when you can't see them anymore. So if they go this way, this way, this way, this way, you want to know. So he went back here. So let you know that he wasn't going to be fucking with you top. He wasn't going to come over here. He was either going for your blue or he was, or he was shitty and going to form his own jungle. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Those are the main things. If you just focus on this, this aspect alone, you can easily raise your rank with just that alone. All right, man. I got to go. GG, dude. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Take care. You too.